tales of the trickster spider, Bra Nancy, have been told across the Caribbean for decades. Having originated in West Africa, the character eventually found its way into the region through the transatlantic slave trade. In these stories, Anansi is typically depicted in the role of the underdog, who can outsmart his superiors due to his cunning nature. Roy Davis, who began writing Bra Anansi stories in 1993, says craftiness and deceitfulness are the essence of his character. The Anansi that I wrote about was, uh, he was a trickster, but he wasn't a bad person, because the whole idea of the Bra Anansi thing for me was that um, Brian Hansen represented the, 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 underpri the underprivileged people, the, the, the slaves, so to speak, and um, Brian Tiger, his adversary, was the, like, the slave master and stuff like that, right? And um, Anansi's role was to always, he being a small creature compared to Brian Tiger, was to use his brains to 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 old smart um, bra, bra tiger, so all my stories are centered in that direction. Hanansi is not, in, in my opinion, Hanansi wasn't a bad person. wasn't a bad wasn't a bad character. Hanansi was like a champion for the people. In his stories, Davis often depicted Anansi against Bra Tiger, his adversary, and let him come out on top as a symbol for the underprivileged. I tried to emphasize that the, the book is not only for children. It's for anybody, children and others. And um, the stories, what first drew me to the Brown Nancy Bar Tiger folklore was the fact that it originated from Ghana. And it was the, um, the African slaves who were brought to the, side of this, to the side of this world who brought the folklore along with them. And um, that's why I make her again interested in it. And I thought well, one of the things that inspired me for writing them stories. Having written 16 Anansi stories over his career, Davis is a pioneer in the literary scene, alongside authors such as Sir Colville Young and Adler Ramclam. However, the art of creating a Bra Anansi story is still alive in the culture as new authors emerge and take up the mantle. Charlotte Neal, author of Belizean Storytime, told us about her desire to bring these stories back into the spotlight. So this was a labor of love, and it took me over five years to actually publish the storybook. Uh, for me, these stories are personal. I grew up in an environment where, of course, we didn't have electricity, we didn't have television, and so our pastime was stories. And my uncles, my uh, other relatives, uh, I relished listening to those stories, those folklore stories. Of course, Anansi was at the center of a lot of those stories. And so for me, it was nostalgic when I started to put pen on paper. And what I wanted to do was recreate that memory because I don't see stories like these um, a lot anymore. And so it was the reason I, I decided to do uh, Belizean Storytime. Neil told us that when creating an Anansi story, his cunningness is the most important part of his personality to remember. To make the stories her own, she depicted Anansi as the trickster that does not always get what he wants. Growing up, I always learned of Anansi as the trickster. And I wanted to put a little spin on Anansi. And in most of my stories, I wanted Anansi to get a taste of his own medicine. And so most of the stories have a moral. And in those stories, Anansi outsmarted himself, uh, basically. And so that was what I wanted to do, especially for, uh, for younger kids, to let them see that, hey, you can try and outsmart Smart, but hey, somebody is always no, smarter no, than you. Are. And so I didn't no, want to I'm leave not. it as Anansi, Why, yes, the trickster, again, getting away with stuff. Everything. That's not the lesson I wanted. The lessons I wanted was Anansi tr is tricky, yes, but there is a lesson to be learned in morality uh, from these stories. Neil's book was published in 2017 and can still be found in bookstores and libraries along with the works of Davis and other Anansi authors. However, she explained that she is working towards having the book republished in the standardized Creole. Silvana Oods of the National Creole Council of Belize explained how they have been working to ensure that Anansi stories are accessible and true to Belizean culture. 
one of the first things we did was to try and um, one of the first thing that we may do that try capture some of the Anansi story then. So Dr. Irvin Beck back in the 1970s may come and record and get permission from people like, I think this man is alive again. And if he is, forgive me if I said that, um, Adler Ramplam and his Belizeanized versions of these Anansi stories that um, the word Anansi itself, itself, we could have it as Hanasi, Hanansi. So that's one of the few words with four variant uh, spellings reflecting uh, different pronunciations that appear standard across the country. And so um, uh, Anansi, we know, we documented and we really thank Sir Calvin Young and people like that for, and uh, 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 Dr. Beck and others um, for having done some of this work. Even though the Anansi character did not originate in Belize, he has found a home here. And by placing him in locations and situations that Belizeans are familiar with, he is a relatable character to read about whether he wins or loses at the end of the story. This is a compilation of short stories. And in a lot of these stories, we put Anansi in the center of the communities doing everyday stuff, like Anansi is going to church, Anansi celebrates Valentine, Anansi um, has an encounter with the police. And so I think uh, Anansi is actually at the center of a hurricane. And of course, in all of these stories, Anansi is trying to, uh, to win, to come up, to trick somebody. And the turnaround is always that he doesn't succeed. Davis reflected on his time writing Anansi with pride and fondness, highlighting the laughter he was able to bring to people as one of his great joys. As I tell you, I'm a creative writer and I know how to create plots. I just use my imagination and I just come up with whatever plot I needed and they were all meant to, to create laughter, you know. If you read any of my story, I make you laugh. I guarantee that. Because it has happened before, you know. So it was easy for me to, to, to create these plots. Very easy. That's something I took pleasure in doing, you know. And if the pin never bend, the story no me wa end. Brittany Gordon for News 5.